Good evening, and welcome to the Church of St. Gregory the Great. Please join in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 201, Immaculate Mary, hymn number 201. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Somebody told me it started to snow. Don't worry, it's not going to stick too much, so you'll be all right. <laughs> we come together on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the midst of this Advent season. We come on this day in which we celebrate a day in which we mark another step in salvation history as God prepares the world for the coming of a Savior by giving himself a mother. And on this day, as we also come before the Lord, as we celebrate Mary's Immaculate Conception without original sin, we recognize our own sinfulness and our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord. Oh. 
victory for him his holy salvation known in the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice he has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel joyfully to the Lord all you lands break into song sing praise sing to the Lord a new song for he has done A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of this kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived the son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Every year on the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception where we celebrate Mary and the doctrine that proclaims her conception without original sin, we hear from the first reading from Genesis, which illustrates the exact sin that we believe did not affect her. It's as if to understand the importance of what it means for Mary to be conceived without sin, we have to first understand sin itself. Throughout the creation stories and throughout all of church, teach, church teaching, the old overriding theme of salvation history is the love of God. Genesis tells us that human beings are the pinnacle and the stewards of creation made in God's image and likeness and that God has given us freedom because he wants us to experience his love and be capable of giving that love. Of course, there's another side to that gift, though. We can also choose to reject God. We can choose to disobey commandments. God loves us so much that he gave us the capacity and the ability to reject and to refuse his love. This may seem like a flaw in creation, but think about it. Are we really capable of love if we are incapable of anything else? Or will we be mindless and robotic slaves of the will of God? We can't pinpoint the exact origin of evil, but we know that humanity succumbs to the temptation to disobey, the desire to overstep our bounds, or to forget our need for God's will to guide us in our lives. Throughout history, this evil has been personified and it's been named. We, talk, we call it Satan, the devil, and it's illustrated in the first reading by the serpent in the garden. The consequences of human sin act upon us and all of creation. The imperfections of the world are of our own making, and unfortunately, they affect us all. We're born into it. Our wills are weak. Our intellects are corrupted. We constantly lose that personal battle against temptation in our lives. And that may seem unfair. We may ask, why would God allow this? That really isn't the right question. In reality, humanity is allowed to live with the consequences of our actions. And again, can we say that we are free if what we do or have done has no lasting effect. Fortunately, we do have a God who does love us and can't stand for us to remain lost in slavery to sin. In his eyes, we are always his beloved children, capable of and destined for eternal life, but we need, to quote the army, his grace to be all that we can be. So what does God do? He sends his son as one of us. Jesus is the Son of God, 
But to be human, he also needs a human origin. Throughout the Old Testament and the history of Israel, it is believed that God's dwelling place is with his people, first in the meeting tent and then in the temple. There was an understanding, though, that when the sinful disobedience of the people was too great, God in his holiness could not continue to dwell there. This plays out in the prophets where God's rejected presence leaves his people. For the temple could not have been destroyed and his people exiled if he had remained there present. Our understanding of sin's effects has evolved a little bit, but the principle still does hold. God is holy. His dwellings are sacred. And while the Israelites believed that it was the presence of sin that drove God away, we know that sin at its root is a choice against God, a rejection of God's will, even when we don't realize that that that's what we're actually doing. How can God dwell where he has been rejected, especially if he will not force his way into our lives. Yet God wishes to be with us more than anything, so he needed to find a way to overcome this difficulty. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has a divine father but needs a human mother. For this Mary is conceived, a human being full of the grace of God and not touched by the stain of original sin, no weakened will or intellect that leads to temptation. At the same time, she is still a fully human person. She has care, she has emotion, she lives and grows in the same world as those around her. She retains her freedom. In fact, because she is not touched by original sin, she is the most fully free human person who's ever been born, aside from Jesus himself. Her freedom is not conditioned by the same weaknesses that ours is. The immaculate grace in which she is conceived allows her to do what no one else born before her could she could fully recognize God's love and accept his will without reservation. It allows her to accept the angel Gabriel at the Annunciation, which we heard. It gives her the strength to listen to the words of Simeon, who cautions her that a sword will pierce her heart because of her son. It gives her the wisdom to ponder the words of her son when he explains his running away to teach in the temple, although I'm sure he probably got an earful when he got home that day. It gives her the foresight to recognize Christ's mission and his need to begin his ministry at the wedding feast at Cana. It gives her the faith to be able to stand at the foot of the cross and sorrowfully realize the magnitude of the suffering her son was enduring for the world. Mary is both an inspiration and a mystery. We do not understand her unbound faith because we are still slaves to the sin that she is not. At the same time, she is the example of what all of humanity is capable of if we were able to fully live out the image and likeness of God within us. And her greatness is not exemplified by any momentous deed or any great healing or any profound teaching that she gives in the scriptures. The only speech we really hear from her is the Magnificat. It is instead her humility and faith that exemplify her as the great mother of God. That's her example that we are most fully human, we are at our best when we empty ourselves and submit to the will of God in our own lives. It's only in humility and with faith that God's grace can fill us and we can, in our freedom from sin, live out the commandment of God, that threefold greatest commandment being love of God, neighbor, and even ourselves. We believe that Mary's assumption into heaven is the foretaste of what all those who have faith have to look forward to at the resurrection. We believe that in her place there with her son, she is also now the one who intercedes for us. Her great prayer, the Magnificat, begins with the words, my soul magnifies the Lord. But that's also her greatest lesson to us. All that Mary is, all that she does is not about her, but instead points to her son, to her God. The purpose of celebrating today, the purpose of any devotion to Mary, is that it will ultimately lead us to her son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. And if you asked her, she would have it no other way. And together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And today we join our prayers to the praise of Mary, who said, the mighty one has done great things for me. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, strengthened by Mary's prayer and example, continues to proclaim the challenge of the gospel to the world, we pray. That there will be peacemakers throughout the world and there will be justice in our own land through the intercession of Mary, the special patroness, patroness of the United States, and we pray. That all who believe in God renew and deepen their faith that nothing will be impossible for God, we pray. For all the members of this parish family may be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit as Mary's was, we pray. That those who have died will join Mary in eternal praise of the God who has done great things for us, we pray. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. That God will bless all who are sick, lonely, or have asked for our prayers, or have no one to pray for them. And may he, in his mercy, hear the prayers and the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving God, who blessed Mary with the fullness of grace, help us to live with innocence and integrity while we praise you for doing such great things for us. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, hymn number 698, Mary's Song. Hymn number 698. My soul doth glory in your love, O Lord. My soul doth glory in your love, O Lord, for you gazed on your servant with compassion. Just to 
Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Graciously accept the sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And grant it as we profess her on account of your provenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be your people, to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
With St. Gregory the Great and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing our communion hymn. Hymn number 704, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman. Hymn number 704.
I invite those of you at home unable to receive Holy Communion to join me in reciting the spiritual communion prayer found on the parish website. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserved Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception through Christ our Lord. Amen. We didn't take up a collection, but if you do have envelopes or something for the collection, there's a basket in the gathering space on your way out of the church, so please just deposit it there as you leave. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing hymn number 702, O Sanctissima, hymn number 702.